All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with the announcements. Again, thank you all for joining. So first off, as always, take a look. Please visit our VA NLU community for all the latest contents and question and answers. When you're there, you can ask questions, give answers, and you contribute. I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are already there answering questions. I see a lot of activity there, which is great. So by all means, uh, please check it out. If you're watching on YouTube and you like what you're seeing, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. When you subscribe, you can get the latest on all our videos, not only for Virtual Academy, but also for um, other uh, groups publishing videos as well. Um, so this session is recorded and it will be on YouTube hopefully by the end of this week. Uh, I try to upload them as quickly as possible, just making sure I edit out all the dead space. So take a look at that on YouTube and all our other past videos as well. So today we're gonna to talk about how to manage and secure your IT and HR conversations. So I know this is a big topic and a lot of people uh, ask about this. So I decided this time I'm gonna share how to do that. And um, let's get started on some, for some high level uh, activity here or some guidance. Uh, this is our agenda. As always, we're gonna start with some, a brief overview followed by an exercise and Q and A. So, um, Virtual agent can handle many different business units. So I'm going to use IT and HR just as just as an example. But obviously, you may use virtual agent for say legal or finance, um, other business units as well. It's all up to you. So in terms of high level guidance, um, at first I really recommend, of course, to use scopes to manage your virtual agent conversations between business units. You really don't want, for example, your IT business owners to touch your HR uh, topics and vice versa. And uh, we're, we're gonna see in a moment is, it, when you want to secure uh, transcripts between, uh, between uh, let's say IT uh, personnel and HR personnel, you really need to use scopes, scopes to do that, okay? Now, for, for today's exercise, I'm gonna use global scope uh, in, in, in place of IT, but you really do need uh, to use uh, an IT scope or an HR scope, or, you know, practically each scope for each of your business units. So when you use scopes, the things you should be scoping or the objects to be scoping should be, um, of course, your, your process owner, um, process owner and agent user roles, right? So make sure that each user only has access to their scope and their scope alone. You may have, of course, a system administrator that can, that has access, in, you know, for, uh, to all the scopes, but in terms of your uh, process owners who are building the topics or serving your end users, they should be controlled uh, with their you know, user roles. Your virtual agents should be uh, conversations, your topics should be scoped. So if you've got a 401k topic and a, and a hardware a troubleshooting topic, those should be in, in their own respective scopes. They really shouldn't be in, in, the, in the same scope uh, so that, again, use, uh, your press owners don't touch each other's topics. Uh, NLU models, likewise, they should be in their respective scopes. Uh, IT NLU model, HR NLU model. If you've got one single NLU model, then that should probably be in uh, global. But otherwise, again, uh, those models should be in their uh, respective scopes. Agent queues should also be scoped. So we're going to see this in a moment in the exercise. But if you've got uh, an IT queue for your agent chat and an HR queue, those should be in their respective scopes as well. And then finally, interaction records should also be scoped. So that way, if I'm not in an, if I'm not in an HR scope, I should not be reading HR conversations and uh, vice versa. So um, there are, when you have multiple uh, business units, you can either be, you, you may be using different portals. So you may have like a service portal and then an employee service center or an employee center portal, right? So if you've got different portals between different business units, just some things to keep in mind. You obviously want to personalize the experience. So if you have different portals with the same virtual agent, you still want to differentiate the greeting or the promoted topics, right? So as we've uh, shown in past academies, if you go to the custom greetings and setup, you can, you know, based, based on the portal, determine what greeting to use, what promoted topics to use. So I really recommend that if you're using more than one portal. Um, I also recommend you filter for relevant topics. So if you've got an IT portal, you don't want HR topics in an IT portal and vice versa. And finally, you may want to uh, uh, consider different branding too. So if you've got a, a service, an IT service portal that's got, let's say, you know, a, a lot of green and teal versus the employee center that's got a lot of blue, you may want to 
uh, differentiate branding there as well. Okay. Now I know a lot of you uh, are using or should be using the employee center. The employee center is our new ServiceNow's new vision of a singular portal for all your workflows. If you're doing that, then um, you won't have different portals. You should just have all your topics accessible in that single portal and that's and a single uh, grouping topic and a choice of promotive topics. Now, before I go into the exercise, there's some relevant uh, plugins you, sh you should be aware of. Uh, number one, the ITSM Virtual Agent Conversations plugin. As always, we've, sp we've spoken a, 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 lot, a lot on that. Um, today, we'll be using topics from uh, HR service delivery. So the HR service delivery uh, plugin has virtual agent conversations. And then finally, the other plugin we'll mention today is advanced work assignment for HRSD. So that's a plugin that will provide you uh, some out-of-box configuration for agent chat for HR. So I'll show what that looks like as well in the exercise. I'm just giving you all some background knowledge on what the uh, re relevant plugins look like. Great. Um, as always, if you got questions, feel free to use the Q&A button, not the chat, the Q&A button. And before I start the exercise, I actually have a poll for y'all. Um, unfortunately, I did not set it up, but in the chat, if you can, if you're using virtual agent for more than one BU, uh, type one, if not, type two. So if you're using virtual agent for IT and finance procurement, type one. If you're only using it for IT or if you're only using it for HR, type two. Awesome, thank you. And the, you know what I'm seeing, which is good, is that I'm not seeing you know a bunch of twos down the line or a bunch of ones down the line. I'm seeing a mix, which is which is great. You know, keep uh, throughout the chat, keep uh, typing that one or that two. Uh, do it in chat, please, not in the Q and A. Uh, just keeping it separate there. The Q and A we'll we'll use for um, uh, for questions and answers. The chat we're going to use for uh, fun stuff like this. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, everyone. I mean, it's it's great to see that. Uh, for, for those of you who type one, uh, this will be very applicable. So uh, on to our exercise, um, we're gonna do, we're gonna go over two things. Number one, a live agent routing between IT and HR. You, you may have seen some of this already in, um, in past academies, but you, in order to um, route and secure, um, a conversation to let's say an, an HR live agent, or we're gonna do some extra things that you may not have seen before, okay? And then the second exercise we're gonna do is how to configure an HR uh, virtual agent topic such that you can um, secure that conversation. And we'll show you what securing a conversation looks like, okay? Cool. So with that, I'm gonna switch my screen share. I'm just gonna say that Q and A is answered live. I'm gonna switch my screen share to my instances. Give me just one second. So this is my instance. I'm gonna start on the left-hand side. I'm gonna expand this out a bit before I uh, do anything else and show you um, some configuration steps. So the first thing you need to do to, to, for live agent routing is to make sure you got a context variable. So now for some of you, this may be reviews, but bear with me because it's all gonna to gel together in the end. Okay, so context variable, right? So I'm gonna to go to the CA homepage, uh, go to chats, uh, settings, general, context variables, and you wanna make sure that the application variable is there, okay? Because we're gonna be using this to as our condition for routing. Should be there already, if not, then, um, you know, just create one. Uh, keep uh, Note that HR topic ID is here as well. Um, this is gonna be provided for you out of box if you install the HR service delivery virtual agent conversation plugin. We're gonna use this one in a bit too, so keep that one in mind application and HR topic ID, okay? So in order to route a user, and I'm gonna duplicate this for a moment and uh, just show you what I mean by routing a user. In order to route a user between um, IT and HR, well, one thing you can do is ask, is ask the person, hey, do you have an HR or IT question? And that's essentially what I'm gonna do. That's essentially, that's essentially the flow I'm gonna show you how to do. So um, I'm just gonna say live agent support is an IT or HR. This is what I'm gonna build, all right? So let me just end the conversation before I'm continuing further and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go back to my 
CI homepage. I'm gonna go to virtual agent designer. And I'm gonna look off what I did for, what the topic is for live agent support. Now, if the out of box live agent support topic is just as simply a script block that uh, has a user connect to an agent. We're gonna modify this so that I, I ask you whether it's HR or IT. And based on that answer, route you to the right queue, okay? Um, so in order to do that, I am going to uh, show you a duplicated topic and I'm, I'm not gonna re, I'm not gonna reconfigure it, but I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step what, what I did so that you can do the same thing I did, right? So you see, uh, I added a static choice and I added a prompt, hey, is your question concerning HRIT, as you saw in, the, in my uh, employee center uh, example. And I created two labels, right? With value HR and value IT, okay? So then I created a decision tree that if, the user says IT, right? If my variable is IT, I'm going to I'm going to do two things on my script block. I added a script out, but I did two things. One, I set the application to IT, and then I uh, ran the system method connect to agent. All right, this is originally in my old method. All I did was um, duplicate it, and but before that, I set the queue. As, I'm sorry, I set the variable to uh, IT. Okay, if the user selects HR then same thing, right? I'm gonna set the live agent application variable to HR, and then I'm gonna have this uh, system connect to, the, uh, connect to the user to the agent, okay? Now, if you're using topic blocks, do the same, you just, you know, do this same thing in the topic block. And then that way you can, you can run that topic block within a topic. I'm not gonna show that today, but that's sort of another technique that you can do if you have a live agent support topic block embedded in another topic. Okay, so this is what I did to ask a user HR and IT. And then I have to set up a queue, right? So I'm going to set up a queue, an IT queue and an HR queue, right? So here's my IT queue. Uh, let me see, I'm going to make sure this is the right one. I have a couple IT cases. Yeah, so here's my IT queue. Context.application starts with IT, right? Remember I set that application I, uh, variable to IT. That way, if someone selects IT, it routes to this queue and it goes to this agent and support group. I'm not going to run through the entire AWA configuration, uh, but Beth, I, you know, believe me when I say Beth Anglin is in here. And if I were to uh, if I were to select IT, you send me to this queue to Beth Anglin. Okay. Um, if the user selects HR, then it's going to send me to this queue. Now you'll see a bunch of other queues here, and you'll see this application is an AWA for HR uh, service management. So these are the queues that we give you out of box, should you choose to use them. Uh, you can see that, the, again, the service channels may vary by either HR case or chat. Uh, but the example I built, the service channel is chat. It's scoped. So when I created this queue, I was in the HRSD virtual agent conversation scope, but I can, you know, I can put it in, or you can put it in any custom scope that you like. And if I were to click into this queue, uh, you'll see, uh, well, let's see, let's just open it up in the HRVA queue. You'll see that my application, uh, can, routing condition application starts with HR. Okay, so if I clicked HR, it would go to this queue, it would go to this uh, agent and this support group, which is Able Tutor. Now, the one thing to note about Able Tutor is that there that uh, agent uh, able tutors role contains uh, sn underscore hr underscore core dot basic. Uh, your you know your hr agent may already have that, uh, but just in case you uh, you don't, I just I just mention it and I'm going to type it in the chat so y'all can kind of visualize what that role looks like. Um, so with that said, we are now ready to. Uh, run a live agent conversation. So let's go back to the uh, employee center. Where am I here? There we are. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what IT looks like and I'm gonna show you what HR looks like. Actually, for the sake of time, I may just show you what I, HR looks like because that's the one that's gonna be secured. So because I scoped the HRQ to, um, Oh, one more thing I forgot. I need to mention before I forget. The reason why, uh, sorry, 
uh, you'll, there are two ways to run an agent topic, right? One is, of course, to ask for an agent here. But the other way is to use this top um, button here, right? The three dot menu, as I call it. In order to use, make sure your topic that I just configured, the HRIT topic, is tied to this menu, you have to set it up in custom ingredients and setup. So be before we start, got to show you guys that real quick. Um, some of you may, you know, this may be familiar to some of you already. Uh, where is it? Well, I'll just use a shortcut here. Uh, it was in VA somewhere. Uh, maybe, yeah. Well, yeah, duh, because I'm in Employee Center. Uh, employee Center, I as, uh, the live agent is unified live agent support. That's what I called my uh, topic here, unified live agent support. You have to add that here. If you, if you only use the default out of box, nothing wrong with that. It just won't, you know, it won't just, it just won't ask you whether you want I, uh, HR, IT. I saw a question on the, the Zoom asking where that variable is defined, just real quickly. Again, general context variables application. Okay. So let's go back to here. I'm gonna say, yeah, my question is concerning HR, okay? And you'll see that Abel is, uh, got routed to him, not Beth, who's an IT. Oh, we're a bit slow here. Hello, hello. Uh, I have an HR question, et cetera, et cetera. So now I'm gonna end this conversation. I'll end it on the user side. So thing to show you is because uh, not only, you know, the, the user, the, the agent was in, had that HR role, I scoped the AWA uh, queue to HR. If I were to go, if I were an admin, and if I were, or let's, yeah, if I were an admin, I can now go to the interaction table. Uh, this is the last one that we did. And it should be scoped to global. Okay, I don't know why that's the, why it didn't get scoped to global. You'll see my other uh, conversations got scoped to global such that, not display, impersonate. If I were to impersonate, let's say someone did not have global scope or you know the right scope. And I, and I went into the interaction table. you'll see that all I see are the global scopes. You'll see that some rows got uh, removed by security constraints. In other words, the HRSD virtual agent scope got removed. So I don't see what those transcripts are. I don't see what, the, what those people were talking about. Okay. I don't know why this one didn't get scoped, but usually uh, if you set your application ID to HR and you've uh, set um, your queue to HR, then it, should, then it should scope to the HRSD virtual agent application. Um, I'll take a look why it didn't work. And uh, I'll post in the comments in the community if I, what, what I find, but that's usually the way to go, okay? So that's live agent. Now, let me show you in the remaining time how to scope an HR uh, virtual agent conversation. Now, you may have seen a, a KB article is like, oh, you gotta set the application to this variable, to this ID and the, um, the HR topic to the sys ID and all that stuff. I'll show you how that actually works and how, that actually, how to actually do that. So let me go back to the designer. This is a quick, let me check one thing. Yeah, I set the uh, live app agent up to HR. So anyway, so let's go to, designer, come on now. Oh, duh, I need to, <laughs> I need to end my impersonation. Let me see if I can. Yeah. Okay, let me go back to designer. So let me just take a, a, an example of a HR topic such as 401k benefits inquiry. Now this topic is provided for you out of box. And what I've done is I've duplicated it to create my own as you know, as is practice, as you should be doing, whether it's an IT out-of-box topic or an HR out-of-box topic, I duplicate it so that I have access to it, right? Uh, so when I click into here, 
it, you know, what in order for a, let me first switch to HR scope so I can access it. Uh, here we go. Uh, Got to go back in. Okay, so the things in order, to, when, when a user um, runs this topic, Obviously, you want to secure this conversation because you don't want any just anybody reading what this person was asking about about their 401k, right? So in order to do that, there are two things you should set up. Number one is the application ID. You need to set that to HR, okay? And then number two is the HR topic ID. You need to set up to be the sys ID of, of, of the topic in the sys CB topic. So you see this is blank right now. Let me see if there's another example where I can show you an example, but where I'll configure it for you so you see what I'm, what I'm talking about. I'll go to this other um, uh, HR topic, Ad Mercy Contact. Obviously do not want this showing up on uh, people's uh, inter um, uh, interactions. Okay, it's not set up for either one. That's okay. I'll go back to and I'll, I'll do it live. All the, all the best. Okay, so. I need to go to the sys cb table. Let's see if I got another instance up or another yeah, table up here. Sif cb topic dot list. Now be careful. You, you know, you have to copy the sys ID of the right topic. Not temp, this, not this one, but this one, right? Copy sys ID. Go into HR topic. I'll just paste it in here. I don't need to script it. Look save. Save and publish. Okay. Now, um, beware when I duplicate when I duplicate this topic. This sys ID may already be uh, entered, right? But it's going to be the if it is, it's going to be the default of the original template I, uh, topic ID. So when I duplicate it, I have to make sure that this sys ID is a duplicated topic sys ID, not the original template one. So, be, so beware, you, have, you, you, will, you will have to update the sys ID when you, um, run the, uh, when you duplicate the topic, okay? So now with that in there, uh, let's go ahead and go to employee pro. Yeah, this is expired probably because I was, um, probably because I was impersonating left and right. Let's run the 401k benefits topic. Of course, it's gonna ask me, hey, you know, can any of these KB asks me? Um, it doesn't. Uh, no, it didn't. It'll probably ask me a bunch of uh, questions. I'll click yes, but then this is probably be, this is where I start. Yeah, what type of plan? It's probably gonna be like Morgan Stanley, right? Uh, no. Yeah, I'll just end the conversation here. And then if I go, so and I'm just a, again, I'm just a user and all I did is run the, run the HR topic. So now let me go to the interaction table. And you'll see the, the latest chat here has been scoped to HRSD. Okay, so when I set the application ID to HR and I set the topic ID equals to the sys ID, you know, the HR, our HR topic knows to scope the conversation to HRSD. So that way, again, if I were to impersonate, um, I don't know why I'm, this is so weird. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I ended my impersonation. Uh, you, you know, you, you can see it. Okay, so that's how you secure this, the scope for your live agent conversations and your HR conversations. Uh, one final note, so let me address questions before I go any further here. Um, is in San Diego to accept chat, do we have to use agent workspace or conversational interface? Um, those are two different things, but I will ask, I will answer that if you want to accept chat, first, I recommend you use agent chat and not connect support because we're deprecating connect support. So I use agent chat. And if you're using agent chat, 
you should be using um, the agent should be using agent workspace, which is what uh, which is what this is. Okay. Um, conversational interface. That's the that's more the configuration page here. So uh, that's not uh, really um, applicable or going to be. It's not going to be helpful for the agent. So I hope that answers that question. Would that be hard? Would that hard coded sys ID be a problem when running the instance checker? I don't know what the instance checker is, so I can't answer that. Uh, if you can type in chat or follow up in the Q&A what instance checker is, maybe. I don't know what that is, so I don't know definitively whether or not that'll be a problem. Okay, um, so uh, one final thing to note is um, if I were to uh, do uh, run more than one topic, in the HR conference, uh, more than if I run more than one topic in a in single conversation, like an IT topic and an HR topic, um, if I run once I run the HR topic, it will switch to an HR scope. Okay, so it's going to be over our our security and our scoping will be overly protective. Okay, so if, um, if I run again IT and HR, it will be scoped that conversation to HR. So if an IT person wanted to try to read the transcript of the first IT uh, conversation topic. They won't be able to. Okay. Likewise, if I run an IT topic and then I say, you know what, trust me, the HR uh, agent, I have an HR question. Um, it's going the whole the whole conversation thread is going to be scoped to HR because again, we're going to be overly protective. And if I ask, you know, if I run a VA topic to troubleshoot my VPN, but then I go to a live agent and ask about, um, uh, you know, my 401k or my payroll. It's going to scope the whole conversation to HR. So just be just be aware of that and be mindful of that. Okay, um, if you may want to recommend users to hey, if you want you know, uh, IT agents to see more but not see the other HR stuff, users may have to be trained to end conversation and, and let's you know start a separate conversation for that HR agent or for that HR topic. So yeah, if if you're concerned about over uh, protection. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what instant scan either. I, I I wish I had the encyclopedic knowledge necessary, but I don't know what that is. But um, if you want to ask that question on community, uh, maybe uh, that'll be helpful. And I, you know, either I can answer that or after some research, or I can uh, ask an HR PM to answer that as well. Okay, we're almost at time there. Again, thank you all for joining. Um, oh, let's see here. Is there an option to directly create an HR case instead of interaction from virtual agent? If you're saying directly create an HR case um, from agent chat or um, inter instead of interaction virtually, yes, there is. Of course, you can always you know go to your system here and say you know create HR case, right? Oh, from live agent, um, I believe so. I although frankly, again, I'm sorry, I'm not an expert in agent workspace, although I do see, or I have seen before, you can create an HR case here, create a request. I, I think, again, based on the, in, um, the configuration of your HR workspace, the agent may be able to create a case for the user if they say, um, hey, you know, this person needs a case. In fact, it may even be created automatically. This, whenever an interaction starts, it may already be created. Um, I know IT does that for incidents, I'm um, just looking at all the buttons here. So yeah, I think it's possible. I just don't know for, for a fact. Um, and security for HR is enabled by installing an HRSD plugin. Uh, yes, it is. So, um, so you can either create your own scope or yes, if you install the HR uh, virtual agent uh, conversation store app, that has a scope. The uh, advanced work assignment for HR uh, store app, that has a scope. You may not want to use those only because I use them just for example purposes. You may not want to use them because it's more, you know, scopes to contain configuration, not so much scope for security. You may want to create your own, you know, HR business scope. Uh, but the ones that you show that you saw here, yes, are ones that were available out of box from the store app. Cool. Yes, I see Linda uh, chimed in say, yeah, they they added create a case to the HR agent workspace. So that's great. Thank you for uh, for that. Cool. Can you transfer a chat? By the way, roll over time. Feel free to stay on if you can. If not, um, I'll, I'll keep answering questions until um, the end here. Can you transfer a chat between an IT nature agent? Yes, you can. I can even uh, uh, show that real quick. And then we really got to go. <laughs> um, so let me just really quickly start a conversation here.
of And then let's say, you know, let me transfer you to my buddy, Beth, down below. What Beth can do or what Abel could do here is here's a transfer button, or no, I'm sorry, here's a transfer to agent button, transfer to, well, Beth's only one active, or this could be just because she's been most uh, active recently, transfer to Beth, and that's it. Press enter, and Beth gets it. And now both agents are on, uh, you know, uh, ad or uh, this admin's case, uh, you know, Abel could leave just so that she's not, you know, a busybody, and then Beth can just say hi. So that that's that's transfer in a nutshell. <laughs> awesome. Any other questions? Again, if there are, again, thank you all for for, for coming to VA. Again, I'm going to figure out why that live agent wasn't scoped. I'll, I'll post the answer on the community page or on um, YouTube. Uh, again, thank you all for joining and we'll see you next time.